Hi all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Ollie. I'm an avid stitcher with an ever increasing collection of vintage sewing machines. I'm currently working my way through um, a how to sew a plushie sew along. Uh, today's video is part three in that series. If you've missed the first two parts, I'll pop a link to them in the description box below. Um, the, today's video is, um, first of all, we'll do a recap. The first one was on the equipment that you need. The second part was on cutting out the pieces from the fabric and today's video is we're going to start stitching the pieces together so that we can create the little bat or whatever plushie you decided to make. Now I got the pattern from the trolleynight.com website. It's a free pattern. I'll put the link to the website in the description box so you can pop across there and download the pattern of the plushie that you want to make. Um, now, the great thing with plushies is it doesn't really matter which cutie you decide to choose to you can still join in with the sew along because the actual construction of plushies is pretty much similar it's it's only really the animal that changes i'm going to be using jerome my Janome, for this particular sew along um you haven't met jerome yet i'm not going to be going into too much of how he works in this video because that will be coming up in a later video on my channel. Um, I'm actually doing another series on how sewing machines have changed since 1912, which is when Grandma was built. Now, if you've been following along with my channel, you'll know that Grandma is my Singer 27 treadle from 1912. Um, I'll put a link to a video that I've done showing you Grandma and how she works in the description box below as well. Um, still to come on this channel, is obviously some more machines in the sewing machine series uh, one with the wrong decals and one that was in the wrong decade um, and I've also got uh, still got to make a new hat with my Singer 128 which has been on the back burner for a couple of weeks now I keep getting distracted by bats if any of that sounds like it's interesting to you subscribe to my channel click the little bell so that YouTube will let you know when I've updated or sorry uploaded another video to the channel and in the meantime, let's get into today's video. Okay, this is the little guy so far. You may remember from the previous video, the so long part two, we were looking at putting the facial features to the front of the head with a technique known as a plique. And to get the pieces to stick to the fabric, we used a stitch called blanket stitch. I've got another video on how to do blanket stitch, which I'll put a link in the description box for you. Um, if you don't want to do blanket stitch, you don't have to, if I can just grab the pattern for a moment. If you have a look at the pattern, it also gives you another option of another kind of stitch. Um, this is a whip stitch, and it's basically you come up and down into the front and the back of the fabric, but instead of catching the little loop as you would on blanket stitch, you literally just keep going over and over and over in through the front, out through the back, and you literally just put a circle of thread all the way around your shape. So you can you can attach the pieces that way if you'd prefer. The next step that we need to be looking at today is you see these little triangles on the top and bottom of the head pieces. They're actually for the formation of darts, and that's what we're going to be doing now. So if we turn over the head to the back for a moment, you can see all this lot is the, the, the back of the, the blanket stitch from the front. What we need to do is we need to fold the head piece so that it's right sides together and so that you line that little um, triangle shape up like that. And we need to do that on the top and the bottom of the head. Now these darts will work in exactly the same way as a dart in something like a blouse or a dress or something. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little clip just to hold the piece folded like that. And I'll put another one on the opposite side too. Now what we need to do is with your seam guide set for a quarter of an inch, we just need to mark where we're going to be stitching. So basically it's literally just along the line of um, where the dart's going to go. When you found where a quarter of an inch is, what you need to do then is draw a curvy line across, or rather at the side 
of your, your little triangle there and then just blend it in to the actual fold line. So you've started out at a quarter of an inch here and you just slowly and gradually getting closer to that pointy end and leaving a little bit of a curve so it just gives you a smooth finish. We're not looking for a point like you would um, with the darting clothes. We're, we're looking for more of a, a rounded kind of finish. And you do that for the two darts on the front headpiece. And don't forget, you're also going to need to do that on the back of the head too. So that's the next step that we're going to do. One of the things I like best about Jerome is he's got a needle up down button which makes pulling up the bobbin a doddle. Okay, we're ready to start sewing. Now you may remember from the last video, um, the sew along part two, I mentioned that the easiest way to sew fleece is with a walking foot and a twin needle. Um, I'm gonna swap to the walking foot in a little while but I'm actually going to use the jersey needle instead of the twin needle. Now with what the twin needle does is it puts two lines of stitching on one side of the fabric and on the reverse side because obviously you've only got one bobbin the bobbin zigzags from one line of stitching to the other so you get the stability of two lines of straight stitch on the front and the stretch of a zigzag on the bottom which is why twin needles are really useful for sewing fleece fabrics but what I'm using today is I'm actually using a jersey needle. Um, jersey needles are designed for knit fabrics so that'll work on this one. Um, I've got a link to both of those in the description box below. As an Amazon affiliate obviously I'll get a referral fee if you choose to buy through those links. It doesn't cost you anything extra, um, it just gives me a little bit to buy chocolate biscuits and tea bags and stuff like that. Right, so as with all sewing machines, what I do, hold the threads before you start stitching. Um, a lot of people say you don't have to bother doing that with a computerised machine like this. Um, but the thing is, this bit, the needle going up and down and the foot moving is still mechanical, so the threads still have a tendency to get folded, to get pulled down inside your feed dogs. So. It doesn't take a minute, it doesn't take any energy to just hold those threads, just give your machine a little bit of tension to work on and you should find it reduces the chances of you starting off a project with a knotty noodle underneath. So let's go. Now another good tip is don't start right on the edge of the fabric, uh, move in a little bit and then that just gives your feed dog something to, to grab onto as well. Okay so let's go, let me pedal a minute. Now the stitch that you can use for stitching it together you can use either just a normal zigzag or if your machine's got it use a, um, a stretch stitch which it kind of looks a bit like a, a lightning bolt. I'll see if I can turn your own around so you can see it a minute. I'll see if I can zoom in, bear with me for a minute. Oops, wrong way. Right. right, stitch number four. That one. Okay, as you can see, it's, it's kind of reminiscent of a little bit of a lightning bolt. What we're going to do, we're going to start off at the quarter inch line. And then we're going to slowly taper that in and blend it into this fold. So we're going to do a slight curve when we get to the fold. Uh, funny threads around the pedal which I've just lost again. Come on, that's it. Right, and off we trot. I've got a reverse button on this one too so back attack is easy. And off we go. Scissors it there. Ok, 
Okay, so I'll just get rid of my threads a minute. You should have something that looks like that and we're going to do that on all four of the little triangles so I'll meet you back when I've done all those. Okay, when you've completed the darts on both your front bit and your back head um, they should look something like that. The dart just gives it that little bit of a, a rounded 3D effect uh, and the one thing that I did forget to mention when you get to the end of your darts instead of doing a back tack right at the end if you leave your threads a little bit longer and just do a, a small knot at the end um, it gives you a better finish. Uh, we're going to put the head pieces to one side for a moment and do the ears. Now if you've watched um, the So Long Part 2, which there's a link in the description box, um, you'll remember that I said that this pattern called for two different colours, one for the outside of the ear and one for the inside of the ear, um, but I only had the one colour fleece so I've used the same colour for both inside and outside but what I did was for the inside of the ear I turned the fleece to the wrong side so that it would have a little bit of a difference in um, texture. Now I don't know if it's coming up that well on camera but this is why it's important when you've decided which side of a fleece that you want to use on your project that you stick to the same side throughout because there is a slight difference in the colour between the right side and the wrong side which actually isn't that easy to tell when you're trying to figure out which side is what but when you've got it side by side like this it stands out really well which is why you need to make sure you stick to the same side. Now it's a, the design element that I wanted on this particular project because I didn't have a separate colour so I'm not too worried about the difference um, and I'm just going to work with that but it is something to bear in mind when you're working with fleece. Um, to make sure that you've got the same side all the time. Right, the next thing that we need to do obviously is we need to put the two halves of each ear right sides together so that we can stitch them. Uh, that's just a case of making sure that when you put the two right sides together they match up like that. Now you'll remember from the last video that I said make um, sure that when you're cutting the pieces out with the pattern on the fabric and you're doing it on a single layer of fabric, you cut one piece out with the pattern facing upwards and one piece with the pattern, pattern facing downwards. Now the reason why we do that is because we want mirror images of the pattern pieces. If you cut them out um, so they look exactly the same, like these two for instance, when you come to turn those right sides together they won't match up. You see how the points aren't going together at the top. Now the reason for that is because they are exactly the same. For it to work you have to make sure that the curves um, are on opposite sides so that when you do turn it over, a bit like a book, they'll meet and match perfectly. So that is something that you need to, to bear in mind when you're cutting out patterns. If it calls for more than one and you're doing a single layer make sure you flip your piece over. When you've got your pieces um, right sides together uh, you, you can mark your seam allowance in a couple of ways. You can either use your seam guide set to the seam allowance for this particular pattern is a quarter of an inch all the way through um, so it's just a case of just mark around the pattern piece where the quarter of an inch is. If you've got markings on your sewing machine you can also use the quarter of an inch marking on that to tell you where the quarter of an inch is. Um, we're not going to sew completely all the way around the ear all we're going to do is we're going to go this side across the top and down that one we're going to leave this bottom side open so let's head off to the sewing machine and start sewing the ears together. Now if you're sewing fleece, fleece is quite a slippy fabric in that it will move as you're working with it and the thing with feed dogs is it will move the bottom piece that's on top of the feed dogs faster than it will move the one that's on the top. So ideally the easiest way to work with it is with a walking foot but if you haven't got a walking foot the best thing to do is sew it slowly and make sure you use plenty of clips or plenty of pins just to make sure that you keep that top fabric 
level with the bottom fabric and what I do uh, if as you're sewing along just keep checking just keep stopping every so often to make sure that your pieces are still in line as you're sewing round now obviously that's that's why it's important to sew slowly because obviously the slower you go the more likely you'll be, you'll be able to catch when it's um, starting to become uneven okay we've sewn the ears now and as with anything that you've got a little bit of a, a curve go back and clip your curves and that will make it easier to turn these the right way out the next thing that we need to do is on the inside of the ears now obviously you'll be able to tell which side is the inside and which side is the outside of your ears slightly easier than me because you'll be using a different colour but basically what we need to do is once you've established which is the inner ear you fold it oops probably easier if I go that way over like that so that it gives it the appearance of an ear and then what we're going to do is we're just going to baste um, across the bottom just to keep it folded like that for the next step now when you're based on a sewing machine all you really need to do is set your stitch in to the longest stitch on there you don't back tack you just literally sew a straight row of stitching um, on the largest setting so that you can see it the one thing to bear in mind though when you are basting is make sure that you baste inside the seam allowance so if your seam allowance is a quarter of a quarter of an inch you need to go inside that so that the basting stitches don't show up or don't get caught in the line of real stitching when you come to stitch the ear to the head. Now a couple of things to bear in mind when you're doing this step that's four layers of fleece so it's going to be a bulky item for your sewing machine to sew. To give yourself um, a helping hand start sewing from this bit and not the bit where you've got the two seams because that's going to be the thickest part go from this end that way just to give your machine a hand um, and it's going to be thick so go slow the, there's always um, the temptation to sew as fast as you can to get it done but that's not the way to sew with the fleece or with bulky items you really do need to slow down your speed because what you want to make sure is when the needle goes through the top you're giving it enough time to get out through the bottom and come back up before you're moving on to the next stitch so you know your sewing machine and your sewing project will thank you for it if you take this step just a little bit slower okay and when you've done that you should have two little ears that look like that okay. now the next thing that we need to do is sew them to the head we're going to start with the front of the head first now, what we need to do before we do anything else is using the pattern piece work out where you're going to put the ear uh, and just mark it on the fabric and then do the same on the other side and what we need to make sure obviously is that the ear placements are going to be in roughly the same area on both sides of the head I mean, it doesn't matter too much if they're not I mean you know bats are kooky creatures aren't they so having slightly lopsided ears isn't going to be the end of the world and then what we want to do is when we've got the ear placements on the front of the face put the ears on so that the inner part of the ear is facing this way that's towards you and then it's just a case of putting it inside the ear placement markings so that it looks a little bit like that and you do exactly the same with the one on the other side so this bit goes towards the top of the head and the actual inside of the ear is kind of going down towards the eyes Oops. like that the next thing that we're going to want to do um, similar when we're making sure that the ears keep their shape is we're going to need to baste the ear to the face piece and again you're going to need to be careful because now we've got five layers of fleece and that is quite thick so go slow take your time there's no rush um, sew machine largest length of stitch and just go easy with it so we've got the ears on 
Uh, I've tied up the loose threads a bit. Now all we need to do is attach the back and do that with the right side facing the face. Make sure you've got the long dart to the top. It's just a case of popping it on the top, lining it up, make sure everything's level, especially those little darts, and then we're just going to clip it together. Or you could use pins, whichever you find easiest. But I would recommend using um, quite a few of pins or clips, whichever one you decide to use, just to keep this fleece still when you're stitching it. Particularly important if you're not using a walking foot. Okay. Uh, go around to the other side and do the same. Now there's quite a bit of bulk there with the ears so just make sure that you pull the the two face um, pieces together at the seams because you'll find that that bulk will push one of your pieces out so just make sure you've lined that up well and that it matches. Now what we don't want to do obviously is we don't want to sew all the way around we're going to leave a little gap at the bottom so that we can get the stuffing in um, so um, just a couple of inches three at the most just across the bottom there you need to leave a gap okay oh I didn't do one at the top hang on a minute I'll do. Right, now with the ears we've now got six layers of fleece so that's going to be even thicker to go through your sewing machine so when you get to that bit again take your time slow down if your sewing machine starts to struggle take your foot off the foot pedal and walk the needle through the layers by using your hand wheel always turn your hand wheel towards you and what you'll find is by slowing your machine down to the speed of your hand wheel it'll just give it that extra little oomph it needs to get through the thickest of areas so you'll find that that'll make it a little bit easier for you so here we go we've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance we're holding the thread slightly putting the needle in the fabric and we're stitching and don't forget to back tack. <laughs> I love push button reverse, it's great. What have we done with that? Oh, right, off we trot. The one thing that I did forget to mention is before you start this stage make sure you put your stitch length back down to a small stitch length which I forgot to do so I'm going to start again. I'm back on my factory default setting of stitch length now which I think is a 1.5. No it's 2. There you go set it. If ever you want to set your machine back to what it was originally before you started messing about with your your settings and you can't remember what it was originally it's a computerized machine so just turn it off and then back on and it'll automatically set itself back to whatever it should have been in the first place so without further ado let's get on with it first ear so I'll get rid of that clip a minute. I'm going to start taking it a little bit slowly just to give the machine a helping hand. Like I said it's not a race. You go as slow as you want or as fast as you want but you see that that is getting quite high now that bump. Now when the machine starts to struggle or when it stops moving you know that it's going to struggle to get over that 
So what you do, so you can see what I'm doing in a minute. Oh, a little bit further down, that's it. Now, Jerome's, uh, Jerome's, J Jerome's hand wheel is a bit small, so you're not going to be able to see it. But it's on the side here, as it is in most sewing machines. So it's just a case of turn it and walk your way through the bumpy bit. And just move the fabric under the foot as you go. Not too strong, you don't have to pull. And then when it gets to the really big bit, just lift your press foot up and move the fabric underneath. We're not putting any strain on it, we're just gently up and down. And making sure it's turning as we go. Now obviously because it is so thick and because it is going to take a while for any machine to get through that, you're going to start thinking, oh this is taking ages. Take your time, you're not in a race. The slower you go, the better it is for the machine, the better it is for the project. So I'll meet you back here in a minute when I've got Jerome through this. And when it starts to get easy to turn the hand wheel, try putting your foot on the pedal and going electric again. And you'll find that the sewing machine's quite happy to, to carry on going. Again, just keep going slow because now we're coming up to a, a seam which is going to be another bumpy bit. Well, actually it's a dart rather than a seam but it's the same sort of thing. And then just stop and make sure that everything's still in line as we come down the other side of that, that dart. I'm going to just pivot slightly. Really is the key with fleece is if you get any kind of um, volume, bulk, the slower you go the better. And we're coming up to the other ear so um, I'm going to be going back onto the hand wheel any minute now. There you go. So I will be back with you in a moment. That's the second ear done, so I'm going to speed it up now because we've literally just got the home straight to the bit that we want to leave open left today. Just rearrange that pressure foot a bit, pressure foot a bit, that's it. the head and the ears so now all we do need to do is just tidy up some of your threads and then turn it out to the right side here he comes wobbly bits there you go and there he is that's your bat's head and with your ears and remember I said make sure that you, you line up your dart seams so that it's a nice even on the top and we've got a nice or at least when we've sewn it up and we've stuffed it we'll have a nice even one at the bottom as well and there you go a bat's head there he is <laughs> he's cute <laughs> isn't he he's beautiful that's all for today's video. In the next video in the series we'll be looking at obviously stuffing the head and putting the rest of the back body together. A uh, bit good idea. Subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell so that YouTube will let you know when that next back video is flying. Um, I hope you enjoyed today. If you did give it a thumbs up. Um, there are plenty of other videos on my channel if you want to go 
head over there and have a look see what else you might be interested in um, as I say still to come on the channel is a couple more videos in the sewing machine series the next instalment in the bat series um, and I look forward to seeing you in some of those as well thanks ever so much for watching whatever you're sewing whatever you're sewing with enjoy your creativity and have fun and I'll see you next time bye for now <laughs>